then he asked some more questions. Are soldiers self-employed? Are gardeners forbidden to eat vegetables from their own gardens? Don't milkmaids get to drink their fill from the pail? Moses wrote, don't muzzle an ox to keep it from eating the grain when it's threshing. Do you think Moses' primary concern was the care of farm animals? Don't you think his concern extends to us? Of course, farmers plow and thresh expecting something when the crop comes in. So if we have planted spiritual seed among you, is it out of line to expect a meal or two from you? Others demand plenty from you in these ways. Think about it. How many services, how many things people pay big money for, whether it's entertainment, spending $100 a month on cable TV or, or whatever, magazine subscriptions. Paul says, is it too much to expect a meal or two from you? Others demand plenty from you. All right, here we are today continuing our journey through Paul's letter to the Galatians. I think we've had what, 19 or 20 studies in this book so far. And today we come to Galatians chapter 6, verse 6. Here's how it's worded in Young's literal translation. Paul says, And let him who is instructed in the word share with him who is instructing in all good things. Let's check out another translation or two. Here's the Amplified Bible. Let him who receives instruction in the word of God Share all good things with his teacher, contributing to his support. The concordant literal New Testament says this, Now let him who is being instructed in the word be contributing to him who is instructing in all good things. Paul's letting us know that if we have been blessed through the teaching and instruction of someone and we're growing in our understanding of the word as a result of their efforts, it's our responsibility to make sure that their needs are taken care of. Why? Well, because of this, studying and preparing to teach in whatever format it may be is very, very time-consuming. Imagine having to prepare for finals every week or having to write a research paper every week or preparing to give multiple speeches every week. It takes a lot of time. A 15-minute speech is not prepared in 15 minutes. I guarantee you, if you've ever had to address a group of people and you've been allotted 15 minutes or 30 minutes, you know that hours and hours go into preparing what you're going to say. And for those who teach, well, it's just like a plumber. A plumber needs to be able to pay his bills and feed his family, just like an auto mechanic needs to be able to pay his bills and feed his family. Those who teach the word also have bills to pay, and someone needs to help them. Just as a plumber brings blessings into our lives by fixing our toilets so that things flush smoothly, and a mechanic brings blessings into our lives by making sure our cars start when we turn the key, those who instruct in the Word bring blessings into our lives as they help us grow in grace and understanding of the love of God for us. So Paul says, take care of them. Help them to be able to continue doing what they are doing. Let him who is being instructed in the Word be contributing to him who is instructing in all good things. All good things, that's an interesting phrase. Now, from my own experience, let me tell you, words of encouragement would fall into that category of good things. Encouraging words are wonderful. Encouraging words help keep me motivated and excited. A positive comment here and there reminds me that what I am doing matters to someone and that it's making a difference in the life of a person. Yet... Encouraging words don't pay the electric bill. Encouraging words don't pay for internet expenses and web hosting, which has to be paid every month so that the massive amount of data on this site can stay available so the work can continue. Positive comments and encouraging words don't pay for groceries. So Paul says, let him who is being instructed in the word be contributing to him who is instructing in all good things. Now, This isn't the only place where the Apostle Paul talked about this sort of thing. As he wrote to the Corinthians, he talked about it there as well in much greater length. Listen carefully to what he said. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 7 through 14, as it's worded in the message. Paul says, I'm not shy in standing up to my critics. We who are on missionary assignments for God have a right to decent accommodations, and we have a right to support for us and our families. You don't seem to have raised questions with the other apostles and our master's brothers and Peter in these matters, so why me? Hmm, Paul's kind of bumming, apparently, 
people weren't supporting Paul, but they were supporting others. Maybe it was because of Paul's checkered past. I don't know. But Paul asks, why aren't you helping me? Is it just Barnabas and I who have to go it alone and pay our own way? Then he asks some more questions. Are soldiers self-employed? Are gardeners forbidden to eat vegetables from their own gardens? Don't milkmaids get to drink their fill from the pail? I'm not just sounding off because I'm irritated. This is all written in the scriptural law. Moses wrote, don't muzzle an ox to keep it from eating the grain when it's threshing. Do you think Moses' primary concern was the care of farm animals? Don't you think his concern extends to us? Of course. Farmers plow and thresh, expecting something when the crop comes in. So if we have planted spiritual seed among you, is it out of line to expect a meal or two from you? Others demand plenty from you in these ways. Think about it. Think about how many services, how many things people pay big money for, whether it's entertainment, spending $100 a month on cable TV or, or whatever, magazine subscriptions. Paul says, is it too much to expect a meal or two from you? Others demand plenty from you in these ways. Don't we who have never demanded deserve even more? But we're not going to start demanding now what we've always had a perfect right to. Our decision all along has been to put up with anything rather than to get in the way or detract from the message of Christ. All I'm concerned with right now is that you not use our decision to take advantage of others, depriving them of what is rightly theirs. You know, don't you, that it's always been taken for granted that those who work in the temple live off the proceeds of the temple and that those who offer sacrifices at the altar eat their meals from what has been sacrificed. Paul is saying even back in the times of temple worship, those who served there lived off of what others willingly gave them. He goes on and says this, along the same lines, the master directed that those who spread the message be supported by those who believe the message. Wow. The master directed that those who spread the message be supported by those who believe the message. See, those who are supporting them are also taking part in spreading the message. Now, I want you to note, as Paul talks about supporting those who spread the message, you don't really find Paul talking about institutions or paying for multi-million dollar buildings. He's talking about simply helping people who are spreading the message in whatever way they're doing it, helping them out so they can keep themselves and their families taken care of. In Paul's letters, giving is associated with helping saints in need, helping brothers and sisters who are going through rough times, and helping those who teach the word. I can't think of any place where Paul, as he instructs the Gentiles, that we read about tithing to organizations. In fact, we don't read about the tithe at all in Paul's instructions to the Gentiles. He just talks about taking care of one another, making sure our needs are met, and supporting those who are out trying to share the message of Christ. Now, as I've been preparing to tackle Galatians chapter 6, verse 6, I've been a bit apprehensive about it. It's not the most comfortable thing to talk about since I am one who does teaching of the Word. But I know it's part of the Scripture, so we need to stop and, and look at this. And as I was looking at this passage and thinking about my own situation and, and the type of work I am doing online, I took a look at the analytics for the Path of Grace website. I was curious to see how many people are coming here to listen to these audios each month. And it turns out that in the past 30 days, the Path of Grace website has had over 19,800 visits and over 25,000 page views. That means there's been 25,000 audios listened to. That's a lot of people visiting the site to listen, to learn, to hear the word, and hopefully be encouraged in the Lord. Granted, many of those folks come back multiple times per month. Some people have told me that they come to this website every single day. It's become part of their routine. Other people may visit one time and say, yikes, this guy's kind of crazy. He's kind of overly zealous for Christ and his successful work on Calvary, and I don't want to listen to this guy, and that's okay. So let's remove that big number of 19,800 from the equation and just say there are at least, let's say, 200 people who visit the site regularly who consider themselves friends and they consider what I'm doing on this site as an important part of their, their spiritual growth. Well, in the past 30 days, which by the way, the past 30 days have been the biggest month ever for donations, there have actually been right at 20 people 
who have helped out to put food on the table. And let me tell you, I am so incredibly thankful for those people. I don't know what I'd be doing without you. Like Paul, who repaired tents uh, at times to keep from starving to death due to lack of support, I also do some tent making, not literally tent making. I do whatever I can to earn extra money to make sure food is on the table, which living in a very rural area, it's hard to find work. So on weekends, whenever I can get the work, I make trips into neighboring towns to play guitar in restaurants and bars wherever they'll have me, and sometimes I'm just playing for tips. And in order to make it to get by, my family currently lives with three generations in an old double-wide mobile home, pulling our resources together, doing whatever we need to do just to stay afloat as I pour into this because we believe this audio ministry is something I am supposed to be doing. There is no 401k. We have no health insurance. Um, it's simply living day by day, trusting that Father will provide in whatever way he sees fit. And you know what? He does. By his grace, we haven't missed a meal. We've missed other things, but we've always had food. And I'm super happy about that. God is faithful. He is always faithful, even when we aren't. <laughs> aren't you glad about that? Anyway, there you have it. Galatians chapter 6, verse 6. My situation now let him who is being instructed in the word be contributing to him who is instructing in all things. My name is James Flanders. Thank you so much for listening, and thank you from the bottom of my heart for your love, prayers, encouragement, and yes, your financial support so I can continue to do this. Be blessed, my friend. Be blessed.